Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thanks for coming to this session, um, Increasing Student Success with Dynamic Multimedia Content from NBC Learn. Uh, my name is Michael Levin. I'm the Technology Director uh, at NBC Learn. Uh, came today from New York City, uh, which is uh, where the headquarters for NBC News is. So I'm really happy and pleased to be here. Thank you again for, for coming. Uh, let me just let my colleague here say a quick hello. My name is Stacy Hawthorne. I'm the technology coordinator for the Medina City Schools. We are one of the Learn 21 schools. This is actually our first full year being a Learn 21 member. Um, and we just integrated the Blackboard Learn content uh, probably about four or five weeks ago. And it's just been phenomenal. So, Thank you. Um, so really today's uh, agenda in the short time that we have is to give everyone a bit of an overview of uh, NBC Learn. Uh, walk through the resource, uh, specifically how it's implemented for uh, Medina City Schools, uh, and answer questions folks, uh, that some of the folks may have. Um, first off, uh, by a show of hands, how many of you prior to coming here had heard of NBC Learn before? A few, OK. Um, again, uh, this is a fairly new resource, uh, educational resource. NBC Learn is the educational division of, of NBC News. Uh, and our team was formed uh, about six years ago to go through the NBC News film and video archive. Uh, anyone want to take a guess, except for the folks from Worcester who, who I told last night, um, anyone take a guess how large the NBC News archive is in terms of hours of content? Number of hours, just a guess. How many? It's actually about six million hours of content. Uh, it stands probably about four football fields end to end. Uh, and our team was tasked uh, with going through that archives, finding the best moments in history, and creating an educational resource for K-12 educators in order to bring history to life, to add relevancy to instruction. Uh, and NBC Learn K-12 was born just a few years ago. Um, it is a collection of now about 13,000 resources uh, that come from NBC News programs and shows like the Today Show, Meet the Press, Nightly News with Brian Williams, Telemundo, CNBC, MSNBC, uh, The Weather Channel. Uh, and really what we're trying to do is provide an educational or uh, engagement tool uh, to help supplement instruction uh, using video content, uh, as well as from other partners as well. And we're going to walk through that today. Uh, the resource, uh, again, spans back to the 1920s and 30s. We update it every single day with current events, as you saw the, the example playing before on the tragic events from um, last week. Uh, and we are also creating original educational content to fill the gaps in history uh, prior to the days of film and television. The resources are aligned uh, to about 30 different subject areas, uh, as well as to the Ohio State Standards and uh, recently adopted Common Core. Um, so why news resources? Um, this is a, a slide I'd just like to talk because in, in some ways journalists and teachers have shared missions. Uh, we are, our goals are both to explain, to enlighten, uh, and to educate. So we're both teaching. Um, and in our particular case, uh, we have to ent entertain and engage. Um, in this type of format, uh, we have everybody sort of in, in a room here, or like you and have students in your classrooms. Uh, but at home, you guys have a remote control and can switch, switch us off at any point in time. So we have a, a little bit more difficult mission there. Um, but then again, um, again, this is uh, what we do as, as journalists at NBC News is really to try and convey um, what's going around the world. Why is it, why is it important for the av average sort of uh, American citizen to understand what's happening in the Middle East, uh, in Middle East and, and how, that, how that impacts us here today? Uh, with the Republican nominations, the primaries, why do we need to know that information? So what they try to do at NBC News is try to boil down complex topics and subjects in easy to understand terms and do that in a short two to three minute story. And those are the stories that we've cultivated here uh, in NBC Learn for Educators. Again, uh, the, the, trying to answer the question that students uh, so often ask in your classrooms, why do I need to know this? That is what NBC Learn is about. Um, the power of stories. Um, storytelling is a, is a timeless art, uh, and so um, this is, a, again, a really great way uh, to help convey information that will resonate with students to strike an emotional chord. Um, we believe in the power of stories. It's basically show, don't tell, uh, and so what we are trying to do is to bring history to life and do it in a short uh, two to five minute video in a very engaging format coming from a trusted source. 
uh, and we'll walk through this, some of those examples in, in just a few minutes. We talked about some of the different shows that we, that br we bring our content from. Uh, more recently, we've added Telemundo content, so we're bringing in Spanish language resources as well. Um, just a couple of different awards we've won over the past uh, couple months. I'm very excited about the Emmy Award. Yes, we all were given an Emmy Award for our Science of NFL series, which we'll take a look at uh, in just a few minutes. Um, as I mentioned before, we also um, develop a lot of original content. Uh, and that, again, that it's not only just to fill the gaps in history, uh, like uh, one of the series here in Finishing the Dream, but also to support a lot of the STEM-related areas. Uh, and uh, so particularly for science and math, you'll see a number of different uh, collections here on the, on the page. These are actually free collections. These are available to anyone, um, versus what we're going to look at today is a premium resource, uh, a subscription resource, uh, which comes with a lot of additional content. So this makes up about, about 100 pieces of content that is, is free on NBCLearn.com. Um, we'll talk a little about the, the technology as well. Um, one of the uh, things that we did f six years ago while uh, a team of folks were going through these mil millions of hours of videotape, um, on the technology side we were working with the folks up at the MIT Education Arcade who had done a lot of educational research in gaming and social networking. Um, Jed talked a little bit about it earlier, and they actually helped us conceive the idea of this cue card technology, which is the media player through which all of our 13,000 resources play back. We wanted to create a tool for students to be able to interact with, to be able to flip, to share, to annotate their own notes, to download, and we'll walk through that uh, in, in just a few minutes. Um, a couple of the school districts um, in the state currently using NBC Learn, uh, including Medina, who, uh, Worcester City, uh, Sycamore and a few others as well and uh, so if you have any questions or like to speak with some of the folks that are using NBC Learn these are the, these are the folks we'll share these slides as well with everybody um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into the resource and let's go into Medina's blackboard system this is a resource that can be used with or without blackboard so if you're not using blackboard you're using another learning, ma learning management you could use NBC Learn as well, if you're not using any learning management, you can also use NBC Learn as well. So it could be accessed a variety of different ways. But if you do happen to use Blackboard, this resource is a plug-in into the Blackboard system, which basically means it's fully integrated, uh, where you can easily embed content into Blackboard assessment tools, discussion boards, wikis, et cetera. And we'll walk through those examples uh, in just a few minutes. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go into our site. This is actually the, this is the standalone version of NBC Learn. Uh, so if you don't have Blackboard, this is, it looks you know, very, very similar. And when you get to the home page, um, this is basically what you'll see. Um, this is the uh, an, uh, interface that's completely web-based. You don't need a local hardware or any local hardware or server to run NBC Learn. We have about 80,000 servers all over the world. So wherever you're logged in from, you're going to get the video from the server that's closest to your geographic location. Um, so that's a, a benefit. You can also download the resources as well. So if you don't have good bandwidth in your school districts or the internet gets spotty at certain times a day, when I'm training teachers on how to use this resource, I always coach them to download the videos in advance. You can do it from home, you can do it during uh, sort of uh, planning time, and you could download those videos to your desktops, laptops. Uh, if you're using iPads, you can use it on an iPad as well. Um, all of the resources, uh, again, are organized around the, on the left-hand side of the page. Uh, and here you see the different subject areas that we help to support uh, from business, health, language arts, science, math. Uh, everything is organized along the left-hand side. There's th a couple different ways to find content. It's a big archive, so we provide a few different ways for teachers to find content easily. You can browse by topic area along the left-hand side of the page. You can search in the upper right-hand corner using a search box by uh, keyword. You can use the state standards tool at the top of the page to select your state and then find content that's been aligned to state standards or common core. So a couple of different ways. And as I mentioned before, this is accessible by teachers, it's accessible by students, and it's accessible by parents as well. So uh, when schools subscribe to NBC Learn through a subscription, we, you get unlimited access. Every teacher gets an account, students get an account, and parents get an account as well. So it could be used in a variety of different ways. Um, so um, at the, let me just jump, in, jump into a couple different examples here. Uh, and uh, social studies is obviously an area where 
uh, we're pretty strong at, um, given, given the depth of the archive. Uh, we organize our content around uh, many different areas, uh, starting with U.S. history, American Indian heritage, African American studies, uh, government politics, so on and so forth. And as you're browsing the resource, it's very simple. You just click like a table of contents to, to drill into the topic area that you're interested in. And as you drill in, the, the, research, uh, the results are refined. So if we were teaching, say, the colonial era, I'll go into, say, the English settlements, let's say Jamestown, Virginia. And when you get here, you have the resources listed here on the right-hand side of the page. Um, you can click on any resource to open it up. I could sort the information by date, by uh, air date, by event date, uh, by when it was published, or alphabetically. I like to look at things uh, in event date order, so I'm going to sort by event date. Uh, and then I'm going to change the sort order from descending to ascending, and now I'm seeing all of the resources on the page uh, sorted in uh, chronological order, starting with the uh, Jamestown settlement. And here you get to see a little bit of the different type of content that we offer at NBC Learn. We have archival pieces. Uh, this is an archaeologist doing the, uh, the dig of the Jamestown settlement uh, in the excavation. Um, we have some original videos as well. Uh, this is one called Pocahontas and the Children Exchange. I'll just click on this one. It should load up. because uh, kids were apparently at this time seen as capable of going across cultures in a way that adults were not able to do. And possibly they were better at learning languages also. Likewise, the Indians sent their own children to visit colonies. In his memoirs, Captain John Smith, who helped found Jamestown, tells of visits by a poet and daughter, the Indian princess Pocahontas. Pocahontas became I'm going to pause that just for a second. Um, so uh, that's an example of a documentary that we created to bridge that sort of gap in history before, before the time of, of film and television. And we have about 500 of those mini documentaries th spread throughout the site in social studies and language arts and science and all different areas. Um, just wanted to point out um, the media player that you see here is what we call a cue card. And this is what I talked a little about earlier. Um, this is a living and breathing and interactive media player, not like you would see any place else. Um, this media player has all of the bibliographic information that's built into it. And you'll notice in the upper right-hand corner uh, where the orange arrow is, this actually flips over like a baseball card. So when I click on that orange arrow, uh, the resource flips over on its back. And that's where all the bibliographic information is contained. So a student or teacher knows where this resource came from, when was it produced, who created it. In this case, it was produced in 2007. It's referring to an event date in, 16, in the 1600s. Uh, and you have the clip length here as well. The majority of NBC Learn resources are short. Uh, two to five minute long videos that can be used to um, start class, uh, incorporate into a lesson, to spark discussion and debate, to get students thinking critically. Uh, and, uh, and that clip length is listed here. Um, I would say, again, about 95% of the resources are in that two to five minute range for those who teach uh, government politics. We have all the presidential speeches and inaugural addresses going back to the 50s, 40s and 50s, so those tend to run a bit longer. Uh, descriptions are listed on the back, usually a two or three sentence description. Keywords, and the keywords are, are, are really important both for vocabulary um, as well as inquiry-based learning. Uh, so if I wanted to explore additional information, say, on Pocahontas, I could click on the Pocahontas keyword, and it'll run a search inside MBC Learn and show us all of the related content uh, that shares that common keyword. And then finally uh, is the citation drawer. Uh, we work really closely with librarians and media specialists, and uh, this is something that was, is near and dear to their hearts. So we designed this for them, uh, whereby you can actually select from any one of the three more popular citation formats, MLA, APA or Chicago manual style, and then students can copy that citation directly uh, into their bibliographies. Um, another aspect of the, of the media player is the transcript. You saw the closed captioning uh, running below. Um, the, the every resource comes with a transcript, uh, and that's 
really, really important. We take accessibility really, really seriously. Uh, and so um, whether it's for students with disabilities, whether it's for English language learners, or students who want to go back and e explore the contents of the resource, the transcript is available here and very easy to access. Uh, students can copy and paste information from the transcript. They can print it out. Uh, they can download it. Uh, they can save it a number of different ways they can use the transcript drawer. Which brings me to the bottom of, of the, the, the cue card. This is where some of the interactive or personalized features of NBC Learn come into play. One of the ways that teachers can save time in using NBC Learner is to use this playlist feature. The playlist feature allows you to build your own personal media library of, of resources that are relevant to your area of teaching. Students can create playlists around homework assignments, uh, and they can actually add, not only um, save them, they can save them to multiple playlists, they can also annotate their own notes, just like one would add notes into the margin of a textbook you can actually annotate uh, through the notes drawer uh, on the cue card as well. Um, so that's the, note, the notes feature. Uh, there's also a sharing feature as well. So if you want to share the resource, a variety, you can do a variety of different ways. Uh, you can share it through email. You can share it through Facebook or Twitter and other social bookmarking sites. Uh, or more simply, if you just want, like the old-fashioned way of copying the link, you can copy the link at the bottom of the page as well. We'll see when we get to Blackboard in a few minutes that this process is, is really easy to embed into Blackboard. You can print the resources, you can download them, uh, and the state standards tool is here as well. So uh, we can go into those a little, little answer questions more about those features later. I just wanted to go back to the top of the page and just address some of the other curriculum areas that we help to support. Current events. Um, this is really a strength of, of NBC News. Uh, we are able to leverage the global news gathering that we're doing uh, around the world to keep this resource current and updated every single day, Monday through Friday. Um, we have a dedicated team of educational producers uh, based in New York and in DC who are reviewing the news each and every day. We don't put every single news story that aired on NBC News into this resource um, because obviously there's a lot of stuff that's not K-12 appropriate. Um, so you're not going to find the latest Kim Kardashian gossip in this resource and uh, in some of that stuff. So you know we, we're very selective about what we put into this resource. And there's a team that goes and screens all that content to ensure it meets a, a, a set of standards. Uh, and, uh, and then it goes into the site. We clear the content, the rights around the content for uh, global use in perpetuity. So uh, if you're using sites like YouTube or other video sites, um, as a teacher, if you're using NBC Learn, you, should have, you would have the confidence to know if you're using NBC Learn that those videos are going to be there tomorrow and the next day, unlike YouTube where you, know, you never know what you're going to get and, and you don't know the source of that content as well, um, which is a, a big concern. Uh, so that's current events. Um, other areas of interest, um, uh, state standards, uh, I'm sorry, business and financial literacy. Um, we've actually worked with a number of um, departments of education around this uh, curriculum. Um, specifically in Ohio, who I know is coming out with a, in their new social studies standards, uh, a requirement on economic and personal finance. We've just added those standards up on here as well, so you can search by uh, those standards. I could show you that in just a few minutes. But our business and financial literacy content is phenomenal. Uh, we draw content from the Today Show, from CNBC, from MSNBC, content on topics such as entrepreneurship, starting your own business, um, uh, leadership, uh, personal finance, uh, savings, investing, getting your first credit cards, uh, taking, getting your first mortgage, saving for college, uh, taxes, insurance, retirement, all short stories that we have included in this, in this personal finance collection which uh, are worth exploring. Um, let me jump back, health and wellness for health and PE teachers who uh, also sort of are, are starving for materials that are current and, and relevant. We update this, this section nearly every day uh, with topics on, on physical health, mental health, regulating health, whether it's the latest in food and nutrition, uh, the My Plate that was just you know, released a few months ago, uh, topics on personal health and hygiene, we have a, a number of stories on. Uh, and then for some of your either, whether it's guidance counselors or uh, career coaches, we have a lot of uh, great content under mental health on dealing with a variety of topics, whether it's uh, building self-esteem, coping with grief or depression, bullying, a lot of stories here on, uh, on, on bullying, forming healthy relationships. A lot of, if anyone watches NBC Nightly News, we do a story every night called Making a Difference, which is about um, individuals doing community service, uh, you know, connecting with friends, family, community, all those stories are here under forming healthy relationships and worth exploring. 
Um, language arts teachers. Um, this is a great place where uh, to find content not just on uh, on the right on on writing mechanics, but um, uh, uh, careers as well. We have all of the author interviews, young adult uh, author interviews that appeared on the Today Show that are available here uh, under a section called Writer Speak, where the authors are talking about the craft of writing in their own words. Uh, and another another section here under writing mechanics. Um, actually, maybe I'll play one of these. Uh, this is a good one. Uh, I don't know. Let's go to lay versus lie. I always have trouble with this one. You lay down the book you've been reading, but you lie down when you go to bed. In the present tense, if the subject is acting on some other subject, it's lay. If the subject is lying down, then it's lie. This distinction is often not made in informal speech, partly because in the past tense, the words sound much more alike. He lay down for a nap, but he laid down the law. If the subject is already at rest, you might let it lie. That's the difference between lay and lie. Would we lie to you? So uh, we have a number of examples like that um, co called common errors in English usage, uh, vocabulary, a number of topics on word roots, so a lot of great stuff here under, under language arts. Um, other area for science, actually math uh, is an area I don't want to forget. I know we have some math teachers here. Um, this is an area that we've, we've done a lot of work in, particularly in the past three to six months, um, uh, covering uh, more so the real world applications of math, not so much the how-tos, and, and these are bucketed into uh, topics here, whether it's geometry or a analysis, math and statistics in the news, basic operations, uh, and you'll see a variety of, of, of just phenomenal content. I'm going to show an example in a little while, but um, this is one we'll watch uh, from our science, our new series that we just released a few weeks ago called The Science of NHL Hockey, which looks at hockey geometry. Um, really phenomenal, phenomenal content. Uh, and with a lot of the, a lot of the resources, um, not every resource, we do our best to provide um, suggested activities uh, or discussion prompts that go with uh, the resources and you'll find those typically wherever you see the activity drawer uh, means that we have a res uh, an activity that goes with it. So this is about um, the earthquake a couple months ago um, where the Washington Monument sustained some damage at the top uh, and with each of the resources you have uh, suggested questions or discussion uh, prompts that go with the resources as well that teachers can utilize with their classes. So um, that's our math and statistics collection uh, and just a phenomenal set of content on that so please let us know what you think. Uh, performing in visual arts, we've got a, an incredible amount of content there for arts teachers, music teachers, theater teachers uh, and there. Science is another place where we're very strong at. We happen to have three full-time uh, science correspondents who report for, for, NBC, for NBC News. Uh, they're out covering a, a range of topics and subjects. So these are bucketed into astronomy and space, physics, chemistry. Uh, one of the series I'll talk about in a few minutes is our Chemistry Now series, which looks at the everyday applications of chemistry. Uh, and I'd also note here that with every area, content area, we do our best to also um, not just uh, put together a set of resources specifically for K-5 teachers, but we also put a little bucket here at the bottom called lives and careers in sciences, uh, or lives and careers in, in sort of in, in business. Uh, and so we try to create little uh, profiles, whether it's uh, a 12 year old environmental activist or a Nobel Prize winning scientist, um, to talk about careers that may interest students down the road uh, in this section. Um, talk about social studies, let me talk a little about some of our original content um, and we'll show a video from here. Um, we are creating original content uh, throughout the year. Um, those are bucketed in an area which we call the special collections. 
Uh, these are some of these uh, collections are, are free for access. Um, but uh, these are collections that have been produced either with the Kellogg Foundation, the National Science Foundation, uh, around particularly of late a lot of STEM uh, areas. Uh, and so, for example, uh, for Valentine's Day a few weeks ago, we did the chemistry of chocolate. Um, for uh, for this uh, for uh, St. Patrick's Day, which is coming up around the corner, we did the chemistry of green, which looks at um, uh, uh, chlorophyll and its role in the photosynthesis process. Uh, so uh, chemistry now is really about um, the everyday applications of chemistry, from the food that we eat to the clothes that we wear to the products that are in our homes, and really tries to simplify uh, chemistry in a way that students can relate to and understand. Um, more recently, uh, we've done uh, some uh, series on climate change. Uh, this is a series called Changing Planet, uh, a big uh, series that we did, uh, and looks at things like melting mountain glaciers, the adaptation of butterflies, drought, rising sea levels, uh, ocean temperatures, uh, and it's a really, really phenomenal set of content. Uh, the science of NHL hockey, we'll look at that uh, in just a second. Uh, and then the science of NFL football. So we are trying to uh, also form partnerships in, in the sports area. So this is a, a collection we did with the National Football League and NBC Sports to look at uh, science and math concepts and, and break them down. So this story is about the Pythagorean theorem, and, and it talks about how NFL players use that to calculate the angle of pursuit. Um, so it's a great way to sort of, uh, sort of draw science and math into, into sports. Uh, the Science of the Olympic Winter Games is a series we did uh, not too long ago with um, folk on the Vancouver Olympics, and we're working now on the Science of the Summer Olympics, which will launch uh, later, late spring. Uh, we did a series uh, with the Kellogg Foundation on the civil rights era, looking at uh, the civil rights era over the past 60 years, both the triumphs and the struggles of the civil rights movement. So um, what I'm going to just do is play one of the videos from our latest series. Uh, this is... Uh, let's play, uh, we can go into geometry, that's a good one. <laughs> especially plane geometry. Plane geometry is a study of things that are flat, like triangles, squares, circles, and so forth. Like the face-off circles, one at center ice and two in each end zone. To start or resume play, an official drops the puck into the center of the circle between two opposing players. The geometry of a circle gives each player an equal chance of getting the stick on the puck. A circle is a closed curve with all points on the curve the same distance from the center. And the distance away from the center point out to that boundary is called the radius. The radius of an NHL face-off circle is 15 feet. If you double the radius, that is going to be the diameter, which goes from one end of the circle all the way to the other and passes through the center. That's the diameter. Now look at the two blue lines that run across the ice, dividing it into three zones. If an attacking player crosses the center or neutral zone and the blue line marking the start of the other team zone before the puck crosses it, that player is offside, one of the most common violations in the game. The neutral zone is another common geometric shape, a quadrilateral or four-sided shape. Since it has two pair of parallel sides, it's also a parallelogram. And since the sides are at right angles, more on that later, it's a rectangle. Other geometric shapes are painted on the NHL ring. A semicircle in front of the scorekeeper. Truncated semicircles, half circles with the ends cut off in front of each net, called goal creases. When the goal tender is in this area, attacking players must not obstruct his movement. Goalies can also play the puck in this area behind the net called the goaltender trapezoid. 
Trapezoids are quadrilaterals too, but with only one pair of parallel sides. As for the puck itself, it's an example of solid or three-dimensional geometry. Take a circle, add the dimension of height, and you get a geometric shape called a cylinder. Now let's take a look at all of this from another angle. Angles, a fundamental part of hockey and geometry. What is an angle? Think of two straight lines or rays that start at the same point. Now imagine a circle laid over it with the center of the circle at the point. The angle measures the arc, the turn between the two lines in degrees. One complete cycle around is 360 degrees. If you just go half around, that's 180 degrees. A quarter of a circle would actually be a quarter of 360, which of course is 90 degrees, and that's called a right angle. An angle, the shape of the corners of a square or a rectangle, and the easiest angles to see on a hockey rink. Angles that are larger than 90 degrees, but smaller than 180 degrees, are called obtuse angles. Good example, what's called the lie of a hockey stick, the angle between the blade and the shaft which can vary, but is often around 135 degrees. Angles smaller than 90 degrees are called acute angles, which are best visualized for those with quick eyes during play, watching defenders try to keep attackers from scoring by limiting their angle of access or angle of attack to the net. An attacker directly in front of the net has the widest openings on either side of the goalie to shoot the puck through. But suppose that this guy has some team players that pushes this person off. Now, from a point of view of shooting, the angle of access is smaller, which means it's going to be harder to make that shot. Uh, goalies obviously are thinking about angles all the time, judging where shooters are shooting from and, and the angles they have to score. All players are visualizing and planning and anticipating angles of puck movement so they can, with precision, pass the puck or ricochet bank it off the sides of the rink, called the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection, which are equal, meaning the puck tends to bounce off the boards at the same angle it hits the boards. If you're rushing the puck up the ice and you can't make a direct pass to the forward, you got to put it off the boards at an angle and have it skate into it. So that's another thing, we use angles and put the pucks in a certain area. I wasn't very good at geometry in school, but on the ice you actually use it a lot more than you think. And use it, blink fast. Those players organically actually are thinking mathematically, even if they're not doing it consciously, and you see it on the ice. They're great players because they're great mathematicians. What do you think? Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right. So, um, what's that? We are adding them. The, 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 these, the, we put the videos up first. The activities are coming shortly and less and like full lesson plans. Some of the uh, the NFL content which we posted last year, the Olympic series all come with activities. They're already up there. So the NHL ones are coming soon. Um, the activities? The, the videos? Um, every day, Monday through Friday. So, I mean, I'm sorry, so current events, current events are updated every day, Monday through Friday. Some of the original content, um, we're doing that throughout the year. So um, the next big series we're doing is the science of the news. And then we're doing the science of the Summer Olympics that later this spring. So we, we're, throughout the year, we're launching new packages or new series, but current events are updated every day. Yeah, sure. Let's take a look at that. So um, state standards um, is, is a couple ways to, to search for content by standards, but this is the way that I like to show. Um, you go into the drop-down list, um, and then when you get here, you're going to see three different options for Ohio. We have a bunch of things up there because we know that things are sort of evolving over time. So we have what's the current adopted state standards listed here under Ohio standards. We have the uh, Common Core for Language Arts and Math, which, which is updated. And then the new or to be released 2014 Science and Social Studies standards are up here as well. So let's say we wanted to go into those standards, for example. Uh, then I would say, let's say we picked uh, Science. Uh, no, oh, <laughs> where, 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 where you look, which one? So studies, okay. We looked at science before, so let's take a look at social studies. So then you select your grade level. And are you high, middle? High. So let's go to, say, grade 10. Then I'll click on search. Once you do that, um, it's going to, we partner with a company called Edgate, and they're the ones who actually help us align our content uh, to the standards. I know it's 
this is not going to be easy to see from, from, the, from the back. But basically, wherever you see green check marks uh, indicate that we have one or more resources that help to fulfill that particular learning objective or, or strand. So uh, this one is about summarizing, uh, summarize the struggle for racial and gender equality and the extension of civil rights that occurred in the United States in the post-war period. So as soon as you click on that particular standard, it will now show you here the 210 resources that help to fulfill that learning objective. Yeah, so that's uh, a couple of ways, but the one that the way that I went that time was just clicked on the state standards menu at the top of the page. And, um, it's in the uh, navigation, right in the at the blue bar, right at the top. You have to be logged. Lo I think you may have to be logged in. I'm not sure if you're logged in there um, to see it. But you can also go at the reverse as well. So if let's say you were in U.S. history and you came across a video that um, you wanted to see the standards on, you could actually open up the media player and click on the standards button here in the lower right hand corner and then select your state and it'll tell you across all subject areas and in, in grade levels that that video is correlated to. Okay, sure. Um, so that's, that's a, a quick look at the content um, and searching. So what I'm going to do, uh, I wanted to turn it over to Stacy to talk a little bit about how um, they're using NBC Learn um, at Medina. Then I'll come back at the end just to answer questions and talk about um, how uh, you can have access to a, a preview for, the, for, for any of the school districts that aren't using it yet. So, Stacey? Thank you. All right, let's go back to the PowerPoint. We'll start back with the PowerPoint. Sure. All right, so just a little bit of background. We are um, south of Cleveland, about a half an hour. We're a school district of about 7,600 kids. We do have two Title I elementary school buildings, um, a total of seven elementary school buildings, two middle schools, and one high school with about 2,600 kids in it. Um, we have been using NBC Learns for about four or five weeks now, and we started out with a free demo, and then we bought the content because um, I w am the technology coordinator, but I also, my boss is director of instruction, and we could not believe how incredible a resource this was um, and how reasonably reasonably priced it was. Um, what we liked about it from a curriculum standpoint is that the videos were short, two to five minutes in length, and they spawned conversations. Um, unfortunately, we do have a few teachers that look for videos that are 42 minutes in length, and they like to sit there and play. And from a curriculum department, we don't like that because it isn't about the kid watching a 42-minute video. So this was really good for us. Um, we are likely going to um, unsubscribe from some of our other services that we've used in the past that are a lot more expensive that aren't meeting our needs. Um, to keep NBC Learns going forward, but we do have um, it through at least the 2013 school year. Um, it's reliable, it's trustworthy. Uh, we have a group of teachers in economics that had a planning day scheduled uh, to work on how to get the new personal finance um, literacy into their economics courses that's coming. And uh, I contacted Michael. Michael did a special webinar just for our economics teachers and showed them how to access the economics resources and put those 2014-15 standards up for them. So during their planning day, they had an hour blocked out, and Michael was online with them teaching them how to use these standards in their new courses that they're developing. Um, we are going to blended classes next year. We will have four classes that are blended where kids will come some days and stay home other days. We are using Blackboard uh, as a Learn 21 member. My language arts teacher, after she previewed NBC Learn, her class for her hybrid class next year is called Composition and Rhetoric. And part of what they're going to do is analyze contemporary video and contemporary writing for rhetoric and bias and those types of things. And after previewing the NBC Learn video, she said, I, I asked each of the teachers, what's the resource that you need to make this hybrid class work for you? And her answer to me was, I can't do this without the NBC Learn's content. So um, that was very important to her that we purchased this content. Um, the other really neat piece about her class is kids will come in uh, one day a week um, on a schedule for private one-on-one -on -one writing conferences. So she said she's, uh, her whole teaching career, she's wanted to be able to work with kids one-on-one -on -one with her writing. And with 30 kids in the class, it's never really been feasible. So this hybrid class is going to give her that opportunity, too. Um, NBC Learns, I have a large number of teachers in our district that aren't phenomenally technical technically literate, um, and this is so easy to use, did I say that wrong? Uh, this is so easy to use that I don't have to explain it to them. Um, they are able to use that. It's easy to use, the videos are short, reliable. Um, kids like it. I have three kids at Medina High School. They go in and search for videos when they're doing research projects on their own because they know they can get information that's reliable that they can include in their videos, in their um, reports. And the setup training it was super easy. Michael's done multiple webinars for us. We had our high school department head meeting. Michael um, Skyped in or we did the webinar um, for that. And all the high school department heads were trained just during the regular staff department head meeting that they have every two weeks. 
And since January, then we've had 658, 658 videos watched. Um, this is uh, Mrs. Zitterbrew. She's the teacher that's going to be doing the composition and rhetoric class. Um, and it was funny that Michael picked the lay and lie video because she actually liked the lay and lie video or anxious and eager video. Um, my daughter does have her, and she's very picky about her grammar so and English usage. So the, she does show those quite a bit in class. I don't want to read it to you. I'll give you a second to read it. Um, is that good? Okay. <laughs> this is our social studies teacher. Um, she is the one that arranges the economics webinar for our teachers. Um, another piece that we have here, we have a student that's taking health this year um, through a regular health classroom, and he is on an IEP, and he has issues discussing sensitive topics in groups full of people. It's very uncomfortable for him, and it causes anxiety issues. We were able to actually build a complete independent study health class for this student, created a new Blackboard class for him, and he, instead of going to health class every day, he goes and signs into the media center when he's supposed to be in health class, and he goes into his Blackboard account, and he has... Uh, each week a topic and all those videos come straight from NBC Lawrence so his entire health curriculum is being delivered by NBC Lawrence and at the end of each video he has to write a report or build a PowerPoint or build a video about what he's learned and he emails those to his health teacher and so we were able to meet the needs of a special needs kid um, by allowing him to get all the health content that he needed to meet the state standards but without having him having to sit in that health class with everybody else. So um, it was pretty phenomenal that we were able to do that. We said, what do we do for this kid? And we pulled up NBC Lawrence was our first idea and everything was there. Um, he's learning CPR from NBC Lawrence. He learned anxiety management. He learned healthy relationships. Um, all of that information um, was right there for him. And this is our director of instruction. Uh, <laughs> Hers is the funniest to me because a lot of times I go into her office because I need to talk to her. She's a couple offices down from me, and she's on the computer, and I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, you should see these videos on the JFK assassination, and she's in there. And I said, Lori, what are you doing? She goes, well, I went to look something up, and I got lost in NBC Learns, and I've been stuck in here for the last hour and a half. So she loves this resource. Um, she said it's like having her own private PV PBS viewing channel. So um, a lot of times it's the big joke. Look, Somebody go grab Lori. She's on NBC Learns again. We can't get her off. So, um, but she really loves the content too. All right, that's me. Great. Are there any Blackboard users in the room? Just out of curiosity, a couple. Um, this will only take a second, and then we'll we'll wrap up. Basically, I just wanted to show um, one of the unique aspects of Blackboard is the ability to seamlessly integrate NBC Learn content um, with one click, and so. Uh, what we've done is we've developed an integration. It's called a building block um, into Blackboard Learn. We haven't done this with any other learning management system uh, yet. But uh, what this means is that from Blackboard, uh, from whether it's a discussion board, a wiki, or uh, any of the sort of collaborative tools that Blackboard offers, you can embed NBC content very easily with one click. So what we do is we click on the NBC content under uh, the mashup option. It takes you from Blackboard into the NBC site. We can get, go back if we wanted to. Once we find a, a resource that we want to use, so let's say we wanted to take um, one of the stories here on the home page. So we could just click on one of the resources. Things are a little slow. Uh, and then uh, once we find a resource that we want to embed, here's a story on standing up um, to bullying. We open, click on that link. Um, the video will open up on the page, and as the teacher, um, since I'm the one who's authoring that particular course, uh, you'll notice the embed option here in the lower left-hand corner. All I have to do is click on that embed option. There's no copying and pasting links or embed code or anything along those lines. You just click on that embed, embed button, and now the video lives in Blackboard. Uh, and that way, when a student comes in to watch the video from Blackboard, all they have to do is click on this link, and the video will open up uh, inside of Blackboard as soon as we click on the thumbnail, and you can watch it from within here. So it's a really, really easy way to embed uh, content into Blackboard with one click. And, uh, and you can also have the playlist feature is available here as well. So you can do that with really anywhere inside, inside of Blackboard. Um, so that's, that's a quick, uh, quick uh, example of how we integrate into Blackboard. Um, just in, in closing, um, I just, you, know, you have some of the materials uh, that are, are with you. If you have any questions, you can come up and visit afterwards. We do provide trials, so you could go online now and sign up for a 30-day free trial. If there are districts who are interested in evaluating the resource, we do district-wide trials as well. Um, it could be done 
uh, for the entire district for select users, uh, and then that can be for an extended period of time, say two to three months, uh, to give, make you, uh, give you some more time to make a more informed decision. And we provide training, we provide usage statistics, and, and all sorts of other information as well as marketing tools, email templates, et cetera. Um, so that's uh, a quick uh, over. That's an overview of NBC Learn, and I want to thank uh, Stacy for for volunteering to help us out and show how it's being used in one of the local districts. And at this point, uh, I'll take any questions or people can come up and see us afterwards. But really, thank you, t thank you for your time and coming to and hosting us here at the Learn Twenty One conference. I'm sorry. Uh, iPad. So I we don't have an app, but it's uh, we it's you can go th right through the Safari browser. You don't need an app. So you just go right through Safari, and it's an HTML5 